Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be discussing the wildly misunderstood wild yam. This is part of my series of misunderstood herbs where I really just try to lay out um, some facts and history about some plants that maybe have a bad rap, that maybe have some safety concerns, or maybe are safer than the media is giving them credit for. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about botanical medicine and some of the herbs that you may have heard about um, floating around in media or floating around in you know consumer reports or research, um, this series is here to help clear some of that up for you. So wild yam um, has become an incredibly popular supplement that a lot of women are turning to as a natural alternative to progesterone hormone replacement therapy. Um, hoping that it can be something that they can do instead of hormone replacement therapy or something that they can do to naturally support their own hormones. And this thinking is a little bit off um, based on what we actually understand about wild yam. And so I'm hoping that this video will educate you a little bit on the products that you're seeing on the shelves so you know um, exactly what it is that you're taking and what it may or may not be doing for you. So a little bit of history. Um, our sex hormones are steroid hormones. Okay, so our um, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, all of our steroid hormones have a backbone of cholesterol, which means the body makes them from cholesterol. This is super important because in today's world where people tend to demonize fats in the diet, demonize cholesterol, cholesterol actually does play a really important role in the body, um, a number of roles, and one of them is in making your sex hormones. So if your libido is important to you or your fertility is important to you, you should care about having a little bit of cholesterol. So anyway, let's kind of get some history. So in the 1940s, scientists were trying to figure out how to synthesize hormones in a way that they could be um, compounded in a lab and sold as a pharmaceutical to patients. So at the time, most progesterone um, was coming from the glands of animals. So it was all animal-based. Um, this process was incredibly expensive and fairly inefficient and so it wasn't something that was going to be terribly sustainable long term. Um, at least that's what some scientists thought. So one such person, let's back it up even further in time, in the 1920s, uh, a man named Russell Earl Marker, if you look him up you'll find a ton of research about him, research, but a ton of history about him. So Russell in the 1920s actually developed the octane rating system. So this is something that most of you can probably at least recognize every time you've filled up your car or have heard about octane readings. So once he established the process for degrading um, that fuel source and, and developing the system, he decided to turn his sights onto the hormone industry. And his big goal was to see if he could synthesize hormones from plants because getting them from animals was such an inefficient process. Um, he actually decided to go to Mexico. He found the Mexican wild yam, which is what we're talking about today. And he was able to determine in a lab that it does have a steroid compound in there that is very similar uh, to our own hormones. So there's a component in there called diosin, um, which when we consume it in the gut, is absorbed and it's split apart into two molecules and one of those molecules is called diastenin. Okay, so if you look on the back of labels for things that have um, progesterone derived from wild yam or just a wild yam product, these are two separate things, which we'll get to that in a minute, um, it might say something like diastenin on there because that is the most active constituent of the wild yam plant that we're talking about. So when he was researching diastenin, he found that um, it did increase estradiol binding. So the diastenin came in the body, it sat right next to the estrogen receptor and kind of allowed it to bind estrogen a little bit better. So it had a pro-estrogenic effect in the body, slightly. Um, he also found that it tended to relax the muscles inside of all of your hollow organs. So if you think your gallbladder, your uterus, the digestive tract, your intestines, um, it relaxed spasming of those muscles, which is great. Um, it also had a very specific uh, application to this little, this little sphincter um, in your intestine called the sphincter of OD, which actually helps with getting um, some of the other enzymes and juices from your other organs 
into your gut. So if you're curious about that, you can look that up. What he f also found about diastenin was that it was a hormone precursor that he could use to make progesterone as a natural hormone alternative. Um, so this is where a lot of the popularity about wild yam is, is that, oh, there's this thing in there that can make progesterone in my body. Um, and that maybe it doesn't, you know, some people think that wild yam has straight up progesterone in it, and that's not true. And some people think that it has this diastenin that if you take it, it will increase your body's own creation of progesterone, and that's not true. So how this process actually works is converting diastenin to progesterone is a five-step process that can only occur in a lab. It's not a process that is possible to make happen in the body of humans or animals. It's just not. So anything out there that's marketing wild yam as a natural progesterone alternative, not so much. Maybe a little bit the diastenin can help, you know, kind of increase estradiol, estradiol binding, give you a little bit of an estrogen boost, can definitely relax muscles in the body, relax smooth muscles on your organs or your visceral organs, um, visceral organs, but the, but ultimately it's not progesterone and it's not going to be the equivalent to taking a progesterone hormone replacement that's been synthesized in a lab. So this is super important. Um, I, I think it's important for everybody to know this. Um, because I think that I think people are being wrongly marketed too. So if you're somebody who you know is looking for progesterone um, replacement therapy or some kind of hormonal therapy, um, this really is something that you probably should talk to either your naturopathic doctor about or your PCP about um, and see if they have some other alternatives for you. But just getting it straight up from wild yam ain't probably where it's going to be. Um, the other final note I'd like to say on this, just in case there's some confusion out there, because I think there is, is that wild yam, Mexican wild yam, where we can synthesize progesterone from in a lab, is not the same as the nice, sweet yams that you eat at Thanksgiving. Okay, so those yams are these nice, bright orange, sweet, starchy vegetables. Mexican wild yam is this ugly, nasty, really like wrinkled up little root um, that looks gross, it tastes terrible, it's really fibrousy, it's really stringy, not the same thing. So eating yams or sweet potatoes is not going to have any of that diastenin slash moving forward to progesterone in a five-step process in a lab kind of quality. So I hope that's helpful. I hope that clears up some things for you about wild yam um, and when it may be useful and when it might not be. And if you have questions below, go ahead and post them there. I'll try to answer them for you. And then stay tuned for some of my other videos about some other misunderstood herbs. All right. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.